a Netflix original film. The Wi-Fi is working. In the event of a global communications breakdown, do the following. Stay inside. What just happened here is happening everywhere. Avoid strangers. We've all been deserted. I don't trust them. And most importantly, do not panic. Julia Roberts. What happens next? Mahershala Ali. I knew something was coming. Leave the world behind. Rated R. In select theaters now and on Netflix December 8th. Today on CityCast Philly, City Council recently shared more details about a new initiative, the PHL Reparations Task Force. This group will recommend steps for how the city can make amends for the impact of slavery on local residents. So what could this mean for Philly's Black community? It's Wednesday, December 6th. I'm Trini Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Rashawn Williams and Bree Moore, you both are co-chairs of the PHL Reparations Task Force. Thanks for joining me on CityCast Philly. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So the call for reparations for Black Americans has been a national movement for years. Why is the city of Philadelphia taking on this now? I think it's a little nuance to that. One, it's really important to know that the city has an existing reparations law. They have a slavery disclosure law where businesses are supposed to disclose their ties to slavery and financial institutions are supposed to provide the city with statements of financial reparations. That was established in 2005, but it's yet to have any enforcement. So that's one. But two, we have so many other municipalities, counties, and nations across the world who are establishing reparations task forces and commissions. And so with Philadelphia experiencing the high levels of crime and poverty that disproportionately affect Black Americans, you know, I think that it's uh, Philadelphia legislators realize that it's finally time and listen to our voices as NCOBRA members to establish a task force. Just explain what that is for our listeners. NCOBRA is the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. And uh, myself, Rashawn, and my co-chair, Brianna, we also co-chair NCOBRA PHL, National Coalition's Philadelphia chapter. Can you explain how your group defines reparations? And what would that look like? The root word of reparations is repair. And so we see the need to make repairs to our education system, to our our environmental ecologies, to our economic sectors, to our family structures. And of course, folks know reparations to mean uh, financial or cash payout to a group that has been harmed. And so that is for much of the work that we do foundational. Bree, did you want to add anything to this? Yes, so NCOBRA works within the framework of five injuries of slavery, and each of those injuries need repair um, for Black Americans under this reparations framework. And those five injury areas are peoplehood and nationhood, education, health, criminal legal justice, and wealth slash poverty or economics. Um, All of these areas are actually going to be covered In the Philadelphia Reparations Task Force, as far as the five of the eight open positions that Black Philadelphians can apply to, we'll talk more later about the open positions, but that is how we are um, framing reparations in Philadelphia in the subject matter areas that we want to address. So you both listed um, several areas in which um, to repair for Black Philadelphians. How would reparations work? on the city level? Because these injustices being addressed, being talked about, didn't start or end in in Philadelphia. So what does it look like for a city like Philly to try to make amends for them? Right now we're building that framework out. So for example, in Philadelphia, 73% of all maternal deaths are Black women. So a local intervention here can look like Um, Black women having doulas throughout the nine months of their pregnancy and three to six months after their pregnancy. 
on an education level, reparations can look like Black students in Philadelphia having a curriculum that centers their history and builds them up to have confidence and see the value in their culture and their traditions and their heritage. There's a lot of local interventions that can be made um, in Philadelphia that can also be a model for other cities throughout the nation. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Rashawn and Bree will talk about how they're working with city council to develop the PHL Reparations Task Force. I want to talk about the development of the task force, the PHL Reparations Task Force. What are the goals of the group? What we want to do is make sure that we can walk away with three things, three very tangible things. One of those things is a report, a report on the forms that reparations can and should take to make amends and atone for the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow. Um, That's number one. Number two is to provide Black Philadelphians with a guide on how reparations can actually help them. So some Black Philadelphians may have financial issues or they may not have been properly educated in the Philadelphia school district or they may have some issues finding their genealogy or they just may have some aspirational goals that they were never able to achieve or meet due to generational traumas and a lack of generational wealth. So we would like to make sure that Black Philadelphians have a guide on the forms that reparations can take and the services that can be availed to them that they can utilize right now to make a change in their lives. And then number three is to actually build an infrastructure, a a Black community infrastructure, so that if and when any form of reparations or reparative action came to the Black community, Black folks are able to utilize Black doctors and Black contractors and Black educators and Black farmers for their business and affairs, because that's, that's a pivotal and most important to self-determination and the promise of independence to Black Philadelphia. Adding to that, this task force is a vehicle for Black Philadelphians to say what they want, what they see is repaired for themselves, and to work for in unison. Also, we have the framework of reparations in real time. We're not just coming up with proposals and recommendations to write down for a, another study. We have so many different studies. We're coming up with these models so that we can implement them as we do the study and for implementation after the study is published. And then, of course, another thing um, that we have a goal to do is create a reparations commission once the task force is complete. OK, so I want to talk about some of the things you mentioned. You said the study. What study are you referring to? Yeah, so for the task force. One of the goals, and it's written in the resolution, is to publish a final report. But the study will look at each of the five injury areas of slavery that I mentioned earlier and the other um, positions on the task force, which will have committees. So I'll go over the, the all the positions now. The positions are economic justice coordinator, education coordinator, law and policy coordinator, criminal and legal justice system coordinator, Atlantic world history coordinator, Human Services and Community Resources Coordinator, Health and Wellness Coordinator, and Urban Planning and Sustainable Development Coordinator. So the final study and the studies leading up to it will focus on all of those research areas, um, looking at the harms, looking at the repair that needs to be done in each of those subject areas. Bree, who should apply to the task force? People who should apply are people who have experience in these areas and people who are passionate about helping our people we're not so much focused on these formalized credentials. You don't have to have a PhD. We need you to be about the people, be about our ancestors, be about our future children who are yet to be born, and be about the people that are currently existing now in Philadelphia. Also, I want to say under each task force area that we'll be doing research in, we will have a committee. So people who aren't on the task force can join a committee um, and contribute that way as well. And when do you all expect to have the task force selected? When will the process be completed? We're looking to have the task force standing by February of 2024. Okay. So just in a few months, is there a deadline for the application? 
January 15th. You know, we've talked about reparations and what it could look like for Black households, especially here in Philadelphia. But what other ways can Philly heal from the injustices of the past? I'll say a couple of things. One, the task force is going to be doing a series of town halls, community meetings, surveys, interviews, those town halls and surveys and um, conversations with community members are going to be broken up into cohorts. There are going to be professional cohorts where folks who work in a particular sector can share about what it's like being black in that sector. And then black families um, and black individuals, these conversations are going to be had. Town halls, one-on-ones, all that. That's number one. Number two is folks can speak specifically to their families that are not black about all of the issues that have negatively impacted black Philadelphians. They can share that history. They can tell the truth. That information is going to be shared um, on rep215.com and through the reparations task force. But allies can share that information with others who might ask the question, why should we be doing so much for black folks? Rashawn Williams and Bremore, thank you both so much for educating me on the work that you're doing and for joining me on CityCast Philly. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for reaching out. For more information on how you can apply to the PHL Reparations Task Force and join a committee, check out the link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the PHL Reparations Task Force, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.